Hello, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the like button. Enjoy listening. Perhaps it's time to spice up our... After all, it's been almost 12 years since my lovely partner and I started making life interesting together. We eloped and got married barely out of our, and since then, our journey has been a real adventure. This time, to enjoy each other's company exclusively, we decided to retreat to our country house for a couple of days. In the evening, I lit the barbecue grill while my wife, Christina, set the table in the gazebo. We sat down, uncorked a bottle of wine, and began to talk. Our house is situated near a small forest about 50 meters away from which there's a clearing where local youth often gathered. Some group had gathered there this time, but they didn't disturb us much, though we could hear them quite well. As I skewered some mat and tossed logs into the grill, suddenly too hefty, slightly intoxicated men entered through the gate without ceremony. Oh, hope we're not intruding, one of them said, not waiting for a response, and they headed towards our gazebo. I asked, guys, who are you looking for? You may... One of them replied, we a whiff of something delicious cooking and thought we'd see what you're up to. One of the guys approached my wife, kissed her hand, and introduced himself. Carl. Christina, my wife, replied reluctantly and visibly nervously. Frankly, I wasn't too comfortable among these two burly, slightly tipsy, and seemingly purposeless visitors. But it felt a bit intimidating to shoo away these two bull-like men, especially considering their slight inebriation which could lead to a negative reaction. Plus, I wouldn't be able to handle them on my own. I'm John. The second guy introduced himself to me, extending his hand. I shook his hand in return and introduced myself. John's handshake was firm, almost making my bones as he sat down at our table. So how about a drink? Carl asked cheerfully, pulling out a bottle of vodka from his pocket. I said, actually, guys, my wife and I were hoping for some alone time. What, you don't want to drink with us? John abruptly cut me off. We really wanted to be alone, didn't we? My wife interjected nervously. You've got a beautiful wife, Carl remarked to me. Expressive eyes, hair tied back, medium-sized cherries, a round bun, though she's not very tall, only 1.62 meters, but it adds to her charm. I see you're not too fond of guys like us, Carl said. Maybe I should invite the others from the clearing, and you can explain to them why you don't respect us. I wasn't too keen on seeing a crowd of intoxicated people, so I agreed to have a drink. Well, that's settled then. Go fetch some glasses, Carl said. What do you mean, go fetch? I asked indignantly. I mean exactly that, go fetch. You think we're going to drink from our hands? Carl replied sternly. Oh, come on, Carl. Why are you picking on him? The man agreed to drink with us willingly, and you're picking on him. John scolded Carl. Carl was generally a bit rough, unlike John, who behaved much calmer, like the bad and good cop duo. I went to the veranda for glasses and watched through the window as John and Carl sat closer to my wife, saying sweet things to her, while she shrank between them, responding reluctantly. To be honest, I was extremely worried, fearing they might start making advances towards my wife. I realized I couldn't do anything but hope for the best and continue the evening. Approaching with glasses in hand, I thought it might lighten the mood. Carl, as always, was ready to lend support and pour drinks for everyone. We enjoyed having a drink together, and it helped us relax. John and Carl kept staring at my wife the whole time. Whenever they told stories, they gestured wildly, constantly touching my wife. It seemed deliberate to me as if they were covertly examining her. Oh, is there music? I saw a cassette player on your veranda. Bring it out onto the street, via pal, Carl requested. I took the cassette player outside, and Carl came over tuning in to some slow music on the radio, rubbing his hands together before sitting back down at the table. We drank a little more, and honestly, I started to calm down. I stopped feeling nervous and tense, and Emma seemed a bit more at ease too. Alcohol had done its job, but later the conversation made me uneasy. Carl kept telling stories about girls, how he fooled around with them, how he used them. Occasionally, he apologized to my wife for these stories and the inappropriate words he used. His stories did pique my interest sometimes, and maybe my wife's too. Perhaps these tales were aimed at her to spark her interest. I don't know. The slow music continued playing softly, and Carl asked, Can I invite your wife to dance? I didn't want to refuse my new, intimidating acquaintances, so I nodded. Of course, my wife didn't want to dance with Carl. I could tell from her expression. 
but she decided not to create a conflict and reluctantly went along. It was hardly a dance. Carl kept exploring my wife with his gaze, and I was not in the mood. I pretended everything was fine while John kept talking to me and occasionally refilling my glass, urging me to drink. All this time, I watched Emma and Carl dance. Carl would slide his hand onto my Emma's hip and squeeze it lightly, looking at me and smiling. Emma kept removing his hand and objecting. I tensed up. I hadn't expected such audacity. Some jerk flirting with my wife right in front of me and smiling rudely. I wanted to get up and approach Carl to tell him to behave, but John stopped me. Why are you getting nervous? Let them dance, John said. Meanwhile, Carl kept at it. Emma resisted a bit, but then, to quickly end the dance with the persistent Carl, she said she wouldn't dance anymore and that she needed to wash the dishes. Emma headed to the gazebo, shooting me a resentful look, and I felt ashamed that I allowed Carl to scrutinize her. I understood that Carl had taken a liking to my wife and wanted to use her. Emma grabbed the dishes from the table and took them to the kitchen. Satisfied, Carl sat back at the table, poured himself a drink, and that's when I couldn't take it anymore. Gathering my courage, I said, Carl, what the... Were you examining my wife? Who do you think you are? Get out of here before I call the police. Immediately, John began to restrain me. Calm down, calm down. Carl ostentatiously produced an item with a handle from somewhere. That's when I got scared. Have you lost your mind? How dare you talk to me like that? Carl waved the object, speaking to me menacingly. Or I'll do as I please. And if you're against it, I'll remove you from the road forever. Carl suddenly rose from the table and strode towards me, clutching something tightly in his hand. My heart skipped a beat in surprise, and I gasped, sensing trouble. At that fateful moment, Emma appeared on the veranda, her eyes filled with obvious concern as she anxiously asked, What's going on, guys? Carl gestured towards her and ordered her to continue washing the dishes, threatening otherwise. Emma obediently disappeared into the kitchen. Carl approached me closely, almost looming over me, and I lifted my head to meet his scared huh. Carl asked me, behave yourself and everything will be fine. At that moment, Emma peeked out from the veranda again. Guys, please don't touch him. Carl turned to her and said sharply, shut your mouth, or I'll shut it for you with my banana. And besides, you need to wash the dishes, which I'll help you with right now. Carl turned back to me and loudly asked, ensuring Emma could hear. You don't mind if I help your wife with the dishes, do you? I remained silent. Carl asked again, you don't mind? No, I said. What else do you see? Carl asked loudly. I don't mind, I replied. Don't mind what? Carl asked again. I don't mind if you help my wife wash the dishes, I clarified. Did you hear that? Carl shouted towards Emma. He doesn't mind. What about you? Emma responded instantly. I don't mind, said his wife. Well, that settles it then, Carl said with satisfaction and a smile. Emma disappeared into the kitchen. Carl picked up some dishes from the table, looked at me with a smirk, and headed to the kitchen to help my wife with the dishes. I felt a jolt, sitting there realizing he was using my wife, my beloved, and I just sat there watching it happen. John patted me on the shoulder, sympathetically and poured me some vodka. Yeah, you shouldn't have talked to him like that. He doesn't like it when people talk to him in that tone. Your tongue is your enemy. Here, drink this. I downed the vodka. I was overwhelmed with shame and curiosity. Yes, indeed, I looked towards the house and wondered what was happening there. Should I go and find out? I was afraid. All right, calm down, John grinned. Carl is helping your wife wash the dishes. I sat and waited, waiting for who knows what. My mind was a mess. What was happening in the house? What was my wife doing? I looked towards the house, trying to hear anything. John, John. Suddenly, Carl's voice came from the house. Bring some beers. John handed me two cans of beer and told me to take them to Carl. I took the beer and headed into the house feeling anxious. I peeked into the kitchen, but nobody was there. So, I went to our room. The door was slightly ajar, but I pushed it open and saw Carl sitting on the couch, facing me, with my wife beside him, trying. Emma saw me and immediately tried to lift her head. Don't move. Did you bring the beers? Put them here. Carl pointed to the nightstand next to the couch. I couldn't say anything. I was simply in shock. Your wife decided to wash my banana instead of the dishes, Carl smirked. If you don't listen to me, I'll punish both of you. Do you understand everything? Carl asked me. Got it, I replied. Carl bent his head towards Emma. And is it clear to you, sheep? 
Emma muttered something. Then let's continue, he said to her. Emma began to monotonously nod her head up and down. Just don't tell me you're not interested, Carl addressed me. Sit opposite us. I like doing this with their husbands. She's not like that, I objected. Really? Carl was surprised. We'll find out from your wife right now. He abruptly raised Emma's head. Carl demonstratively asked Emma, Are you like that? Emma silently looked at me with a pained expression. Carl asked again, Are you like that? Emma obediently replied, Yes. See, and you said, Go on, Emma slowly lowered her head. I said, Sit opposite. I want you to see how I'll use your sheep. Look, your beloved husband's banana seems ripe, he said to Emma. What do you enjoy more, watching your wife entertain someone else? My lips were parched from silence, as if I had fallen into a trap of my own embarrassment in front of Emma, whose eyes seemed to read every thought of mine. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, indistinct sounds began to echo, a melody I couldn't explain. Something strange was happening, and I felt my wife was involved in it somehow. While I stood in confusion, Carl, with a grimace on his face, watched what was happening as if he knew something I couldn't grasp. Carl periodically made sounds like, oh, 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 ooh, you, ooh, ooh, scrutinizing Emma's face more closely. Look into my eyes, he commanded her. Emma turned her head slightly towards him and stared into his eyes. Her face seemed somewhat foolish, especially considering she was still doing this at the time. I became even more intrigued by this, my hands reaching for the banana as I began to derive some pleasure for myself. By this time, Emma, evidently, had also into it, clearly enjoying the situation. No longer inhibited by me, she did as she was told, making sounds of pleasure. At that moment, John entered. Oh, 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 Carl, it seems you've decided to fully punish the hubby, John chuckled. Watch. John seemed to be interested too as he started to stroke his bulge. Meanwhile, Emma continued. Carl instructed my wife to stop and simply open her mouth wide. And I, like a donkey, sat there watching her. I realized Carl was about to onto my wife. Watch. He intensified his efforts. Emma closed her eyes in pleasure. I'm coming, Carl yelled. I truly felt like a nobody because all of this fascinated me immensely. John looked at me with interest and a smirk. I want to use your wife, John said, pulling out the banana. I think hubby won't mind, Carl smirked. Emma looked at me as if I were a goat, but that interested me even more. Do you love your wife? Carl asked me with a smirk. I do, I replied. Well then prove it and kiss her, Carl suggested with a smirk. John, laughing in response, didn't need much persuasion. Come on, don't be shy. Kiss her, Carl insisted, playing the role of provocateur. With a smile on my face, I agreed to his proposal and eagerly approached Emma to fulfill his request. As Emma and I continued, John was already fully enjoying my wife. I liked the fact that some guy was using my wife while I kissed her like never before. We continued to kiss, and Carl approached us. So, are you enjoying yourself? Carl asked me with a smirk. Go ahead, try again, Carl said with a smile, looking down at me, waiting for me to act. I glanced at my wife and saw in vivid detail how they were doing whatever they pleased with her. Enough, Carl said. I shifted slightly, lying on my back so that Carl could see from below how he was about to use my favorite. Unable to resist, I took his balls in my hand and began to massage them. Faster, come on, faster, Carl ordered me, gritting his teeth and closing his eyes as he began to shout. I felt used, knowing I was doing these things. It was a conflicted feeling. On one hand, I knew that after this, Emma would look at me like trash, but on the other hand, there was a thrilling sensation. I enjoyed it all. Meanwhile, John had picked up speed as the sounds intensified. What? Enjoying how I'm using your wife? Look at her, she's loving it, John exclaimed, panting and laughing. Well, what now? Get under your favorite? I'll show you how real men do it. I crawled under Emma and watched from below. There wasn't much longer to wait. For John continued to use my wife. Now clean up after us, John told me. Or get to it, jackass. Clean everything up. How does it taste? Throughout all of this, John and Carl sat in armchairs, watching me while sipping beer. They joked and called me names. John gestured for Emma to sit next to him. Emma, gladly obliged, casting a contemptuous smile in my direction. A fool I am. The thought flashed through my mind. But my banana remained in my hand, of energy and readiness. 
I didn't let go because I was curious about what would happen next. My interest in the events only grew like thirst for an oasis in the desert. What do you think about it? Write in the comments and subscribe to my channel. Bye.